Jeff with Covet the Camper. Well, we've been using the camper a lot more lately and uh, we've noticed that we don't really get good cell phone service in a lot of the places that we camp, whether it's boondocking or state parks or RV parks or anything like that. Uh, some places just, you know, are right on the edge of having good signal or, you know, maybe just a, a little bit of a boost and we could browse the internet on cell. So decided to install a cell phone booster. So what I'm gonna do is show you the system that I purchased and kind of a neat idea that I had to install the antenna. We got an outdoor antenna, goes to the booster, which is uh, really cool because it's got a 12 volt adapter. So like a cigarette lighter plug, but it also has the AC adapter for plugged into shore power. So I'm gonna run the uh, all new cable into the camper to the booster and then to an indoor antenna that will shoot the signal out inside the camper. I'll show you what I got. So I picked up this system from Phone Tone. It's uh, you got the booster, uh, 25 feet of cable, the AC adapter, the DC adapter, so just a regular cigarette lighter plug or 12 volt plug. The indoor antenna, it's a magnetic mount or Velcro mount, and the outdoor antenna. This is an omnidirectional antenna, so you don't have to point it in any specific direction. It just picks up signal from all directions. So the idea that I had was to mount it on the old batwing antenna up on the roof. So I've got the antenna cranked up. I'm going to remove the television antenna. Uh, from the old, you know, it's the old uh, analog style antenna, the bat wing, bat wing antenna. We haven't updated to the HD style antenna just because we don't watch TV in here. If we're going to watch something, it's usually on the iPads or on the phone or something. So I'm going to remove that and that way I can mount this uh, omnidirectional antenna to the bat wing, to the arm of the antenna so we can raise and lower it wherever we're at. And, you know, with the and the TV antenna part, you can adjust it, you know, to get a better signal. I don't think we really need that with the omnidirectional antenna. So, but it's there in case, you know, we can mess around with it and see if maybe turning it will give us a little bit more of a boost. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the actual bat wing portion of the antenna removed up on the roof and see if the brackets for this, um, omnidirectional antenna will actually fit that arm, you know, so I can crank it up and down. All right, so I've got that up all the way and I'm just gonna crawl up through my escape hatch here and take a look. See, Mount Lassen's kind of lit up tonight. All right, so on this bat wing antenna, you've got to remove these little seat clip retainers. There's one there, one right there, and I think there's one on that side. Nope. Yeah, just that one and that one. I'll get those removed and then I should be able to just slip this bat wing portion right off. Disconnected my cable, which is really UV damaged and cracked and probably this antenna probably wasn't working anyway. All right, so we're left with the two arms, and the reason why there's two arms is that that allows it to slide back and forth on those pivot points that were in there, uh, so we could lay flat on the roof. Now, I don't know if I'll 
be able to utilize that. I'm going to cut this cable and get in out of here. And that just slides, just slides through this hole and out that hole and the cable comes out. So what I'm thinking might be best is if I remove this piece of tubing here and just mount the antenna to this piece of tubing. All right, so again, it's just a, uh, one of those little C-clips and the pin, and then it uh, comes right out of the channel. Pretty easy. Now I'm gonna crank this thing down. Get this antenna out of the way. I'm gonna crank this arm down and see if uh, it lays flat. And it does. Cool. There's a couple of mounting holes right here. I'm just gonna screw that thing right into the aluminum. All right, so I got an eighth inch bit and uh, a couple of these little stainless steel screws. So I'm just gonna drill a pilot hole and then use the stainless steel screws um, with a little bit of uh, some of that uh, deoxidizer between the aluminum and the steel. I also uh, just add one of these about right there. So when it goes down, it hits the foot onto the rubber roof instead of the, the aluminum bracket. All right, well, I got the outdoor antenna mounted onto the bat, the old bat wing antenna, uh, crank up antenna arm. And it's getting a little bit dark, so I think going to uh, take a break for the night and get back on it first thing tomorrow morning. So I'll see you guys then. All right, so now that I've got the antenna mounted up on the roof, I'm gonna go ahead and just test this. Just run the cable through the hatch there. So before I plug this in, I'm going to check my signal here. I did a screenshot. I've got one bar. I'll go ahead and plug this in. Bring the antenna over here. And you want to have about six to eight feet between the outdoor antenna and the indoor antenna. And the antenna's right there, I'll do another screenshot. All right, yeah, I'd say that was a pretty significant difference between having the booster on and with it unplugged. So I'm gonna finish this installation up and then we'll do a final test. All right, so in this compartment up in the bed area, that's where the uh, TV, the 12 volt and the uh, TV plug is the AC and the 12 volt plug and the cable come in and this is a false ceiling panel uh, So up in here where the stereo is and stuff. That's where the wires kind of bundle All right, so I've got the cable strung up through the Aluminum tubing there. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to the antenna I took the uh, cover the vent cover off of the the refrigerator 
vent up here and I was going to just run the cable down uh, through this corner. The screen was all kind of goofed up and uh, I don't really like the cable running on this hard edge right here. So I'm just going to replace the screen, put this vent cover back on and leave the refrigerator uh, as is. Now this is the radio antenna and um, I went ahead and took the actual uh, antenna part off the base uh, here has three hex screws. I'm going to go ahead and remove these and see if I can maybe uh, fish the cable in that same hole because that that's where directly below here is where the uh, that 12 volt plug is and the uh, AC outlet and stuff. All right, so there's the antenna cable and the back side here. The funny thing is when I pulled this off, this wasn't even connected. So they either forgot to thread it on and it just slipped off or it was just never connected to begin with. <laughs> so anyway, we don't ever use that radio anyway. So I'll, uh, maybe I'll remove this fitting. Maybe I'll run the cable down there. All right, so I've got my fish tape and the cable uh, taped to it and pushed through. I think it's down in that hole pretty good. So I'm gonna go down in that cabinet, see if I can pull it through and then I'll uh, get this cable drawn down into that compartment. All right, so there's the fish tape and the cable there. So what I'm gonna do is just pull the fish tape back out and uh, I'll probably drill another hole in here somewhere, probably right here, because I'm gonna mount that, I wanna mount that booster right here. And uh, that way I can just drop this cable straight in. I'll do that now. All right, so I've got my rubber grommet installed and I'm going to throw a little bit of sealant down underneath this fitting and then run the screws in and then seal over the top. And I'm using this uh, Lexel. All right, new screen. Put some stainless steel screws in to hold it down so the wasps don't get in. I'm gonna put my cover on. All right, so I got the refrigerator cover back on and the screw holes sealed. Use clear on that. I used the uh, Lexel white sealant on this. Of course, the Eternabond tape covers the cable and then I like to seal the edges of the Eternabond tape with uh, a sealant. So when I'm running down the road, it doesn't peel up. Got that old cable uh, inlet entry point all sealed back up as well because I didn't use that and I didn't uh, I didn't want to leave the antenna the TV antenna exposed so I took that out and sealed it all up so we're good to go So this is the stuff that I use. I didn't use the Lex LA. This is still made by Sashco, but it's called Big Stretch. And uh, it stretches like 500% of its original form and it doesn't crack. So I like it better than the Dicor. Uh, it's not self-leveling, but you just kind of work it if you're using it on the roof. Uh, it does a good job. So that's the stuff, Sashco Big Stretch. All right, and I got the rubber grommet put on the interior side, a little bundle of cable. I'm going to get my booster mounted right there and the antenna mounted. All right, so it's all plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and do a speed test here real quick. 
Again, I've got AT&T. All right, now I'm gonna unplug it. And I'll run a speed test. All right, so one other thing I wanted to mention was power usage on this. So 1323 right now, I'm just hooked up to the solar panel. So 1323. With it unplugged. And now I'll plug it into 12 volt. So we're now powered up. Thirteen twenty-one, and there's not a whole lot of sun hitting the solar panel it's about five in the afternoon right now so not too much usage you can run it during the day without it affecting your batteries at all works really well with the booster plugged in got great speeds uh, download and upload Without the booster plugged in, um, not very good, <laughs> as you saw in the screenshot there in, or in the uh, screen record. wasn't very good, so the booster definitely works. I'm happy with that signal boost. Of course, we'll test it when we're out boondocking and camping in different locations to see uh, how it pulls in signal and do a, maybe do a little update video on that down the road. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll catch you on the next one later. I almost forgot. If you could hit that thumbs up button for me, I'd really appreciate it. Also, right next to there, look at that, subscribe button. Give that a little tap. Really appreciate it.